Greetings, it's Vagram, back again with another episode of Hot Blocks. Now this time, I've decided to really take a breach into something that could, dare I say, revolutionize. Uh, today, I would like to look at the sawmill from Mariculture. Now the sawmill can be kind of a daunting thing to understand, which is why I'm here to help you understand it. Now, the sawmill itself is not hard to construct. Uh, log, some copper ingots, some wood slabs, and what's called a construction block, which is used in a lot of machines and things in mariculture. And that's not hard. Fence posts and logs. No big deal. And of course, an iron axe to top things off. Now, what does the, what does the sawmill do? And uh, I'll get to that in just a minute. The bigger thing that I think you should understand is that you really should consider making the factory. This is a book you can make. Make a book and then combine it with an iron wheel from Mariculture. This will net you a book called The Factory. And this has all sorts of explanations of things in it. But amongst what it does have, introductions, auto dictionary converters, the sawmill. This explains precisely how everything can be used. Now, that is very, very good. But I thought we could get things started here. Now, the first thing you're going to need to make use of the sawmill, and this is a bit misleading. The sawmill does not do what some other sawmills do from some other mods, which is multiply your wood output. The sawmill is actually used to craft and create custom blocks. You basically make some planning chalk, which is some limestone and white dye, real easy. And you make a blank plan, which is paper, black dye, and two blue dye. These both get used up. What you have to do is you right click on a block with the chalk. And if I was in normal mode, normal survival mode, both the chalk and the blueprint, the plan would actually have been used up. Then you basically put your plan into one of these three slots. You can change slots by right-clicking on them. You can take the plans out by left-clicking. And this lets you make your own custom blocks. Now, I've got right here sandstone. Whoopsie. But let's say that I want to make a block slightly different. I want to make sandstone that actually has stone on top. Now the sawmill requires no power. It only requires time and patience. You put resources into it just as I did and you will get a block out on the right hand side. There are upgrades that you can do that will actually improve the yield from the machine and its functionality, but we'll get into those later. Uh, what happens now is I get a custom sawmill block and as you notice oops auto eject right there responds to redstone signals requires no power even tells you when you're missing your ingredients but right now i have six new blocks that is a block that has all the sides of a sandstone block even the bottom but it's got the top of a stone block. Now that is definitely interesting. And this is just the beginning of the possibilities. So I'm going to take my plans and I'm going to walk over here. Here's something very interesting. Now there is no wall over here, but if I walk the right way around, there's no wall over here either. Or is there? Now, this is just tip of the iceberg. All the things that you can actually do with the sawmill. The sawmill uses plans like we have our block plan right here. Put that in there. Right click to select it. What I'm going to do also 
is plug in the ethereal upgrade. This is something you can make that basically is an upgrade for the machine itself. You can only have one in there. But what it does is it increases yield. Now, in this one, you'll notice I got six blocks. Well, now, we might be fortunate enough to get a little bit more. I'm going to grab some sandstone and some feathers. What I'm going to do is make myself a ceiling for this new machine. With this new machine, sorry. So basically, when you're looking at the machine itself, there is north, east, south, and west. That is basically starting from north clockwise around the compass. Then there's the top of the block and the bottom of the block. And you are literally defining what each side looks like. And normally, I would get six blocks out of this because I put six things into it. But with the ethereal upgrade, you get 12, which is very, very cool. And you'll notice top sandstone, north sandstone, south sandstone, east, west, everything, bottom fake air, which means now if I go up here, I can actually put these blocks in. You'll notice very, very unique set of properties that come to light. But from the top, totally opaque. Now, one quick mention that I wanted to make before I forget is that you can actually make custom blocks. You'll see I have all of these blocks that I made that were for the various walls. But there's something I didn't realize fully until I spoke with the actual creator again. Joshy Jack. You can actually get one of these blocks. Um, I'm just going to grab one of these. So I put this down. The, I believe that's south face. Actually, I'll be able to tell you. Yeah, the south base is sandstone. Everything else is what's called fake air, which is where you just put a feather in that slot and make it invisible. Well, <clears throat> what if I want to have that on the west side? I don't want to have to make separate stacks of blocks for every single face. And I thought that's what I was going to have to do, but you don't. If you get a wrench, any kind of wrench will do. I just happened to grab a quartz wrench from Applied Energistics. Right click it. You can rotate these blocks. Now, that's not going to change the top and bottom interface, the top and bottom face, but it will let you rotate blocks so you can make one sided wall blocks for your base but you only need one set because you can twist them around later on if you want to rearrange or put a wall in a different way facing a different direction. I think this is very, very cool. This is very neat. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned this before I forgot. Now, you can make some very, very eclectic looking blocks in this sawmill and it's very very interesting but it branches out even farther where you can actually use it on stairs i'm going to place a stair right there right click it with my chalk and i get a stair blueprint now normally as i said chalk and the plan would have been consumed and i'd have to make more that's fine right now these things have 16 uses but in the next version of mariculture that's going to get bumped up to 64 according to Joshy Jack, the creator. So that's very, very cool. Now I right click on my stair plan and I'm going to make things very interesting. I want a set of stairs that is dark wood on the sides and the on the bottom, but I want the treads on the top to actually be light wood. So, I'm going to actually input this just like this. As I said again, top side, bottom side. This is the north face, the south, uh, the east face of the block, the south face and the west, and north, east, west, north, east, southwest. So as I said, around the compass points clockwise, starting at north, east, southwest. So we've got now, thanks to, we normally get four, thanks to the ethereal upgrade, we Double that output, eight. And we have custom 
stairs, which is very cool. Now, there are other mods you can do this with. For example, you can make carpenter stairs with carpenter's blocks, and you can make them one color and then put sides on the other color. The problem is that side is actually a micro block that extends into the next block space which can make it very, very inconvenient for house planning and for putting things in compact spaces. This, however, does not do that. This is actually retexturing and repainting all the different sides. Now, there's also other things from Mariculture that use this same functionality. I am struggling to find it right now because Mariculture is a very, there it is, big mod, but I think I can sandstone 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 there we go I now have repainted sandstone stair yeah but the paintbrush isn't the minor attraction, the major attraction here. It's just a minor benefit to be using the, the whole sawmill system. The primary focus, the primary thing, is the sawmill itself. And it gets even better. Torch. Place one down. Right-click it with our chalk. We get a new plan. And, of course, our old one would have been used. I'm going to get... Um, just going to... Take half a stack. We'll put this right here. Right click to select it. And I'm just going to put sandstone in there. And we're going to wait for this thing to process. Now, this is a custom light block. I am going to actually make a block that works as a torch. But you can hide it anywhere. It will look like another sandstone block. And it will behave as another sandstone block. And I will be able to show this to you in just a moment. So now we get 12 of these things. Custom light block. And here is the cool part. Drop down. I have some curtains from Extra Utilities. They're blackout curtains. And in here I have a block of pearl. As you can see by Wayla, it says a custom light block. Now I'm going to grab that and break it pitch black. Put down one of our handy dandy. Really? Let's do it right about here. Put down one of our handy dandy sandstone. And we have a lit room that has no other light sources visible. This is awesome for house planning. This is awesome for uh, safety and security in your base. This is such a great feature, which is really one of the things that actually started having this whole system stand out to me. Now, being able to make one-way walls or one-way mirrors, as they're sometimes called, is very, very cool. But custom stairs that are still in a one-block space, custom light blocks, and there's so much more that you can actually do with this system. Go grab our factory book real quick, and I'll show you. now. You've got different plan types, carpets, block plans. You can make carpets for your floor, carpet blocks that are custom tiled like something else. Do you just want a carpet that looks like marble? You can do that. Um, custom blocks we've gone over, custom stairs. You can redo slabs this way. Fences, fence gates, walls. Uh, there's the light block right there. The RF plan, any block that handles redstone blocks. Now, I'm actually not sure how that works. Never experimented with it before. But I think it's worth looking into. Now, I'm just touching bases here. I'm just showing you the capabilities of the block itself and how the sawmill functions. There is so much to it that you can actually do. It's got speed upgrades to make it process quicker. You can automate it because... Every side of this block equates to a side in here. So if you pump in from the top, it will go in the top block slot. Pump in from the bottom, it goes in this one. North base, east base, 
south base and west base. So you can actually automate this thing and have it put stuff out, which is very cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. With Ender I.O., you could even filter and have a, a pipe that is pushing and pulling on one side to output things to a target inventory where all of your results go. So there's a lot of capabilities you can do with the sawmill. You really can customize your base. And best of all, due to uh, some level of programming prowess by uh, Joshy Jack, the creator of Mariculture, this thing doesn't affect your frame rate. I've been playing with it all morning on this map and on another map, and I have yet to see my frame rate get dented by some of the most complex and most bizarre blocks I've ever seen. I'm not sure how he does it, because I'm not that well versed in such things, but even using excessive amounts of carpenter blocks can affect your frame rate. So there is something right that's happening here, and that's just another point in favor of why I think the sawmill is such a hot block. It really does merit attention. It really does merit getting into Mariculture to take a look at the sawmill and so many other things. And Joshy Jack has done the great thing of having so many books. If you look, there is the Fishing and Breeding book. You can craft that. Basic Materials and Processing. You can make that also. The Sea Witch's Guide. You can make that or you get it randomly when you pull out a pearl from an oyster. The factory, you have how to dive, breathing underwater. He's got all of these things in the mod that just further merits really taking a look. But even if you don't dive headlong into Mariculture itself, I really do suggest you at least take a look at the sawmill and what you can do and all of the things that dovetail into it. I might actually go into further in depth explanation of certain specific things when I actually do a uh, mod guide with it later. But we'll circle back around to this later. Right now, this is me bringing it to your attention so you really can see all of the amazing things that it does. So, this is Vagram. Thank you very much for joining me in this quick video on a wonderful block in Mariculture by Joshy Jack. I really appreciate you guys swinging by, spending your time with me, and watching my videos. As always, likes and subscriptions and sharing are always appreciated. This is Bigram signing off. Bye-bye.